cocoon into a caterpillar. From a caterpillar to a butterfly, the metamorphosis is here, is live. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, word, sound, and power. Music, drumming, current affairs, everything to grow and lift up your mind. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, creating beauty and stimulating change from a constant supply of relevant knowledge and information. No more youths and youths for sale. We get wise and don't decide to change their style. Bobby Rock, keep your empty promises and your crooked smile. Metamorphosis, come with your thoughts. Change your way of thinking. Metamorphosis. The change begins with you. You, 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 you. I'm going to try to black men of Ethiopia, Timbuktu, Alexandria, gave the light of civilization to this world. Ethiopia shall stretch forth our hands unto God, and princes shall come out of Egypt. I am I, soft moose, thy jaw, rust, far eye. Keep listening. He goes away from Africa. With the intention to steal our Styles FM. The good father passed by and said, Humble yourself, my children. Humble yourself, my little one. Humble yourself. Oh, my brother, you too. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Styles FM.
Tinastilin, Tinastilin, greetings, ill, all ones and ones listening to Styles FM. And to ones who are particularly locked into the metamorphosis. Yes, this is a talk show where we move talk beyond utterances. And we move from talk to thought. And thought is the foundation of our being and our actions. Yeah, hail to the ones who are on the island, right here in our immediate environment, Port Antonio, Bound Brook in particular. Hail all the ones in and around, and as we go circumferentially around, all the way into the town and across the east and the west parts of Port Antonio. Hail the people in Buff Bay and the people in Hector's River at the other end. Windsor, lead the people, welcome, welcome a new one into the earth. People in St. Mary, Bonny Gate, the Gihai Gate and Broad Gate, Port Maria, Straight on the coast. So all around the island, we hear the people on the island. And for the people in Kingston who are not at the 96.1 or 96.7, we hear all those who are locked into cyberspace. Of course, a special welcome, of course, to those who are listening in foreign lands to various devices all across this glorious planet. We say welcome to Styles FM. Welcome again to another edition of the metamorphosis it's a program where we ask you to have some equipment close by because it's a program of searching and unfolding and unlearning and reviewing and repositioning and exercising the franchise that is divine which is the power of thinking let us not be fooled it is a divine right to think and for persons who refuse to think, they have defined themselves as slaves. So if you, if you ever want to be a volunteer, to be a slave, it's a choice. But most persons, I think, would rather have some level of control over particularly their own lives. Be the captain of their own destiny. So to arrive at that, it needs clarity. And the greatest clarity comes in overstanding the self. The I, the almighty, divine, powerful I that dwells within all, within all individuals. Many are aware, many are unaware. The mainstream remains unconscious of the powers of the I. It is a small group who knows and therefore holds reign over almost the entire planet. Small groups of people who overstand the powers of the I. And encourage others now to diminish their eye and to let their eye become dependent, that it becomes slave like. So, metamorphosis, exploration, challenging, looking into self. Now, previous program, I, was, I started off by talking about this in, experience I had in downtown Kingston in the marketplace. The woman refused my money because some of the coins were single. And for the whole week, Trust me, I've been strong. <laughs> yes, in thinking, really, what is the foundation of a process like that? What will generate to a person's brain to see them walk past dollar coins on the ground? What is it that is in their brain that prevents them from bending down and picking up those dollar coins? Is it that if they were alone and nobody was around, they would pick it up? So there is something in our meditation that I really want to try to see if we can get at. But in the long and the short of the thinking during the last couple of days, because thinking for me is a process, and an important exercise to improve your thinking is reading, because the brain really is a muscle, some aspects of it. And muscles grow through exercise. And if you don't exercise the muscle, it, it goes through something that they call atrophy. It shrinks up becomes almost useless. So in thinking over these last couple of hours, 72 hours, 96 hours, my basic conclusion was that, look, to thinking, thinking is an energy activity, right? It is energy in motion. And motion, energy cannot be stationary. 
energy has to be in motion. So what I've concluded now, briefly, is that, you know, we have forward thinking and we have backward thinking. But you know, as two men don't lock up in the binary of either or either, I think that there is another type of thinking. And I call it no lateral thinking. Yeah, these are the three notions we're going to work out. Forward thinking, backward thinking, and what is lateral thinking. Because certainly thinking occurs. It's a matter now of direction. And it's a matter now of the force of the meditation. There's something else that is happening that I want to make mention of to know. You see, we have been kind of conditioned to think in a system that they call a binary system. Oh, I'll just bear it me a little bit. It is called binary thinking, meaning now you lock up between two poles, you lock up between two ends. So one of the ends, one of the ends could be yes, for example, so the other end would have to be no. So we call that yes and no thing a binary. Much of our thinking as black people coming off the plantation has been in this, what I call this binary configuration. And how it works is this. It's either up or it's down. It's either in or it's out. It's either hot or it's cold. Those are examples of binary thinking. You're either rich or you're poor. So you hold those type of extremes in your processes of thinking. But what it does, you know, it limits you to see other possibilities. For example, in between forward and backward, there is neutral. In between good and bad, there is indifference. In between yes and no, there is maybe so. But we lock into a thing called either or either. And it's a very deadly frame you have to think out of. Yeah, either or either. It don't make no room for reasoning. It don't make no room for negotiation. It don't make room for not but war. It's either or either. No, you see, you know, a thinking process, we have to pause. Whether you're educated or not, is a thinking process that I and I have been going through. And it don't make you any different necessarily because you go to the thing called a university. Because this thing is something that has been put into our system, a way of thinking. And the only way we can challenge that is recognizing it first. Once we recognize it, we will make an effort now to change this either or either, my way or no way at all, that type of meditation. So we're looking into types of thinking. The other thing I want to speak to now before we get into the essence. People, when the no say, above our heads, 225 miles above this planet, how far is that? All right, so we live in Port Antonio. From Port Antonio to Montego Bay. Look a bit over 100 miles. Where is the engineer? All right. So if you go to Port Antonio, live from Port Antonio and go to Montego Bay and you come back, you cover, uh, you cover over 200 miles. You know what you do now? It's a journey there now. Just turn it upward. And you're going to travel those 200 miles and add upward up, up into the sky. Hey, and I look at baby journey, baby journey this now, you know. When you see 230 miles above us, there is a space station, this magnificent construction that traveling around this planet. There was an emergency there two days ago. One of the coolants in one of the wings of the, of the station had a leak. And some ammonia come out. And in 48 hours, the man then plan an emergency spacewalk and go outside and carry out a new pump and do a thing and unplanned, but because the man them train for the emergencies. Them could have go out there and in 48 hours, them gear up outside there, find the leak, change the pump, back in. One of the man them come back to Earth yesterday, cause it was due. <laughs> it's all like a taxi, you know. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? This is you know, this is happening 225 miles overhead. You see, tonight, you no, know, I wanted also to talk about the ascension of Jesus and how high Jesus had to go <laughs> to get into the kingdom of heaven, because certainly 
it must be above 225 miles. We sure are that, you know. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, Styles FM, Dr. Iman Black is the host. Yeah, that was just a little introduction to some of the things that I think we need to start as workout. Types of thinking that we're engaged in. The forward, backward, lateral versions of thinking. Of look into this scientific research that is happening around us. Because a lot of black people who are into Christianity are afraid of science, you know. They think it's a challenge. They think it's science versus Christian religion. But science is information about practical things in the earth. Yeah, we have things that are measurable, things that have a historical things. And so it's nothing to be afraid of. You know, it's something to, to sort of begin to embrace. Because we are the original scientists. So the pyramids, as great as they are, I'm telling you, this International Space Station is a serious piece of construction. It was built by a combination of all white nations and Japan. Of course, the black people contributed their brains in the background in the space program in America. We don't see them. We saw one black woman becoming an astronautess, Jamie Jemison, and then that was it. But we understand that we have to pay attention to what takes place in those regions, what they call outer space. Some Canadians, some Canadians have done some research also now, but they're looking into the earth. So they want to the people looking off the earth, to the people looking inside the earth. Where are we looking? I'm saying make we look into ourselves. Now ourselves is vast and greater than the inside of the earth and the outside. Yeah, so people are searching and we must begin to search and connect the dots in a way that it liberates our way of thinking and gives some economics. Because that is the foundation. No matter how much spirit you have, you know. 
Remember, say the spirit thing come out of sugar cane and sugar cane plant in the ground, you know. So, with all the spirit talk, there's a foundation. There's some work to deal with that. So, the space program now, and the Canadians. You know what the Canadians have found? This, this, in, this came out about two days ago. They said they go into a cave two point something kilometers into the ground. And then find water coming out of some rocks. And when they look and examine the water, it has some organisms living in it. Now you see these rocks with the water coming out of? Them say these rocks are at least a billion years old. Right, no, no, no people can jump up and say, boy, them can't know that. They could just say the rocks are extremely ancient, almost as old as the earth. <laughs> right? So we're not going to fight with the numbers. But in these rocks are chemicals that are essential to life. Now, we are chemical beings, you know. We are electrical, we are chemical, we are magnetic. We are that type of person. That's how we make up. But what the theory and the research is showing is that there is possible life inside the earth. Now, what are something? What are something now if when them done search and search, them conclude what my theory say? Now, my theory now is that earth and its population did not begin on the surface because the surface was too hot. And it's greatly, it's not impossible that on the inside of the planet, life is habitable. It is habitable inside meaning 100 miles inside to the center of the core. We might even have atmosphere on the inside. You see the imagination? We have to push the imagination because it is ours. So we have to wait until those guys do their own research. We can do psychic research because in truth, nobody has been to the center of the earth. Nobody. So all we're doing up here is projecting what we think and everybody have a right to think. Metamorphosis.
Metamorphosis with your host, Dr. Iman Block, encouraging people to become courageous within the activities inside their own heads. Yes, you have a right to move around in your own head and to organize and reconstruct your building, the castle that is within your heavens. So information is crucial and unlearning is a serious process. Because once you get fed a certain diet, yes, you certainly shall die yet. Yeah, once you get a certain amount of propaganda into your system from a young child, it's difficult to, start, to sort of give it up when you start have to expose. Some people are so lazy that they're unwilling to change themselves. Lazy, you know. Them say they want to change, you know. But it's a work. It's a work. And it's a work on yourself and only the self will benefit initially and then others around you will see that yes you have made some changes in yourself so everything begins but you see when you're lazy you're going to become a slave and <laughs> i say no it's an easy route to become a slave and here in jamaica now there's like a divergence the laziness is settling to such a level now that we're becoming a paradise of beggars it's not just a matter of being unemployed it's a matter now of being lazy some man now, as I was saying to Doc earlier, man them developing a certain method now of begging. <laughs> that is scientific. You think so we don't know what we do? It is based upon observation. All the principles. <laughs> all the principles, right? A man just observe you going to a supermarket. First of all, him walking along the road, I'm coming to you face to face and I'm trying to make eyes forward with you. And you try to duck him. And you think you duck him. I'm allow you to go into the bakery. I'm allow you to buy your things, and as you get to change, you just step up. <laughs> and I say, wow, boss. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, it's rough. It's rough, you know? So I'm saying, no. Them kind of character, no. Shall use them wit? That is wit, you know? That's intelligence. Yeah, I need to be reorganized. That is more productive and more constructive. So it means that things have to be organized in a different kind of way. But we're not getting to that at the moment. We're really saying, no. Is that... The identity issue that we want to go into now in the metamorphosis. I got a link from somebody on the Facebook. This bridging here tell me that he's Mexican and his wife is like his wife is white and his son is black and his other brother is black and white and it's a whole sort of mix up thing and his issue is identity. Identity. Who is he? So I figure say as usual in I word sound, we deal with Identity. So we're going to get into it. No. Father against son, 
little children having children in this year so there is no doubt about the state of the affairs of this world today all sort of conflicts all sort of crises some people would want to argue that these were predicted these were prophesied and on those type of reasonings, try to use the King James Version as some document of reality. But wars and rumors of wars, these are activities of nations. These activities have going on ever since man began to organize himself in groups. If you look into the animal kingdom and the insect kingdom, there are wars. There, there are insect wars. There are wars at the animal kingdom. So war is not something that is indifferent to nature because it ends up about being a struggle. And the initial struggle that faces every being is survival. Just being in existence is the first stage. So to get to that level of meditation, you really have to sort of begin to focus a little bit on the eye. Who really is the eye? You know, what is the eye? Because that, it's not important enough to say who. What really is the eye? What are the powers that manifest through the eye? What are the natural forces that run through that eye? What are the cosmic forces? What type of solar energies run through the eye? Because the eye eventually you now becomes almost like a, a point of conversion of energy and we transform the energy into activity so the identity now becomes an important foundation for thyself what is the I and who is the I now I always like to say that within the context of identity we tend to want to start I tend to want to start at birth when the egg and the sperm connect and in that connection, we have two forces joining together to form one. And each force carries a certain amount of power and energy and consciousness with it. So the sperm, particularly the head, which has all the power, has within it memory, it has DNA material, it has consciousness, it has all the forces for mentality and the egg carries the same amount of powers and forces but the identity at those levels are diffused when the merger takes place there seems to be a unity that gives it a different sense brings it to a different dimension of reality and at this fusion we have the emergence of the eye so the eye becomes the centerpiece around which the me will develop the me now is going to be the physical body but there's a center consciousness a center of awareness and we call this center the I oh, when we look at how the I evolve now and how the egg and the sperm multiply into its millions and billions the first organ that generates itself out of this fusion is the skin and the skin is for protection the skin is for breathing the skin is also the organ of feeling so there is emotion there's a first organ it's the most important it's the largest organ in the body and in the, in the organ of the skin we have the characteristics that we use to define what we're gonna call race because the race is really now, how do you identify that person when they emerge? So one of the first features that they develop is their racial features based upon the skin. And the skin of the fetus of that child carries with it the memory of both parents. And we're talking specifically now to the black child. But I, I really can't speak of anymore any other with any amount of you know that kind of authority but studying i and studying myself 
I can share this perspective. So there's an eye, and the eye is grounded in a physical being. And we identify the physical being through characteristics. And one of the features of racial characteristics is your skin. Another feature of your identity at the racial level is your hair. And your hair is simply an outgrowth of your skin. So we understand where it's coming from. Another feature are, is also your eyes. So at the foundation of the being is a racial identity. It's grounded in melanin in the skin, melanin in the eyes, melanin in the ears, melanin in all the important organs, particularly the brain. That gives you your racial identity. And within a couple of weeks of the journey, you develop your sexual identity. You are either going to be a male in dominance or you're going to be a female. These, of course, are defined also by the hormones that the body release. They define whether you're going to be male or female. So even before you come out of the womb, we have these two levels of identity. Your racial identity and your sexual identity. I always say that even prior to that, coming out of the cosmic reasoning and ancestral talk, we have a spiritual identity. So we're going to call it a threefold foundation of self. A spiritual identity that comes through your racial line, meaning your great-grandfather and your great-grandmother and all of our various forces that define who comes now. There's your sexual identity and there's your racial identity. Now, if you look on a child now who comes out of the womb, he must come out in a certain space on this planet. Wherever he comes out, he's given an identity based upon physical location. So we call that his nationality. So if you are a Spaniard, Spanish, Spaniard is not a race. If you are an Italian, if you're born in Italy, you're an Italian by nationality. You, that does not give you your racial identity. So we're trying to make a distinction now that your racial identity is what you're born with. It's in it. The national identity, you adopt it as you come out and you can change it. So you can leave a country after a number of years and go live in another country. And after a certain amount of years, you have changed your national identity. You can also adopt a political identity. You can say you're a Republican or a Democrat. You can say you're a PNP or a JLP. These identities you adopt as you grow. And you can change and you can reject as you will. You also adopt a religious identity. And it, here it becomes problematic. Because here is where now everybody begins to claim that they are right. And most righteous. And the war start. That's the far I know. <laughs>
Jacko, you can't hear the background reason, you know. <laughs> yes, I am Jacko here engaging that the fact that enough things have been put into us doesn't mean that it cannot be changed. And some of the most vicious wars fought on this earth have been over the whole religious identity issue. Each religious identity claiming that they have a divine connection now to the Father above. And the Father above still don't want to make the people in war. It's that part they know me can't understand. Or we sit down in a film chair and just make people just start themselves in his name. I always want to know that, you know. Maybe, maybe I'm asking too much of a profound question. But I'm not a, a really favorite person in the notion of war. And within man and humankind and civilization, we ought to be working to diminish war at all levels. The argument is that we are the superior beings. I am wondering, why are we the superior beings and we are the only people that need police? The animals have no police, you know. Yet the animals don't need police. Why is it that human beings need police and human beings are supposed to be the most advanced? You think on that for more. But we'll continue looking into the identity issue now. And we can say that clearly. When the races are what you call mixed and the children come forward, there seems to be a serious amount of conflict and sometimes maybe even confusion in the minds of those children because they come up in just society seeing that race is foundation and you ask a little black child if he'd want to be white and probably, some of them will probably say yes because they perceive the environment to give the children who are white more opportunities and better response so the I know within even your own view of religion do you have enough space in thyself to really listen <laughs> to what another religious person is saying or is it that you so firmly gripped in your belief that you can't listen because listening means you almost have to let go you know you have to let go to listen properly but most of us are holding on to something while we're listening so it kind of just a bounce off our ears. We're not ingesting the ideas and thinking it over because we are afraid. We are afraid that the ideas that we're hearing might make we have to change. And there's fear in change. Most people are afraid to change. It's a fear also now. I realize that fear is one of the greatest handicaps in the mind of Christendom. Christian people. Fear. What really is fear? I just discovered how fear work. Fear, okay, we have these two powers in our meditation. We're going to call one the will, willpower. We're going to call one desire. So it's a two-engine thing we're driving. What fear does is cripple the desire side. It cripples your desire to the point wherein you reach will not. You have become so afraid that you fear to have any certain desires and then the fear transformed to will not. So think about it now, you know. The power of this thing called fear. And we have to abandon fear to be able to listen to others when it comes to this discussion around religious identity. I want to talk later on about the ascension because this idea of above and this idea of our Salvation, resting in the above. It takes away enough of our life right here on the present. So when we send up our prayers, when we send out our feel, by the way, you ever think about what really is a prayer? It's something that you make up in your own brain. First thing, it's in your own head. I get the feeling that it's like a ball of energy will build up. And it's all around desire because it's around what you're desiring. You're praying for what you desire. So I said, ball of desire build up. And then it reach a level now where it's like a thunderbolt, like a lightning ball, and we have to throw it. But guess where we throw it? Up into the sky. And it just evaporate. No result. I am saying, if we take that 
ball of desire and fling it to the center of our being, it must shake way up. And so we will have change without fear. Metamorphosis. Okay, so we talk about racial identity now. We don't want to spend too much time on the religious identity because we don't see the problems. We don't see the problems between the Pentecost and the Baptist and the Seventh-day Adventist and Jehovah's Witness and the Rastafari and the House of that and the Church of that. It just goes on endless, endless. But racial identity now is vital. And this is where I think we as a people now are even quite confused. The word Negro. One of my colleagues jokingly was asking me if I'm on, is a nigger. No, in America, them say you can't say that word. So I asked him, what do you really mean? He must say, you know, are you, are you a nigger? He said, I'm seriously asking me the question. And I said, to answer him seriously, because maybe in his own movements and playing music, he must say certain things, and maybe he wanted to be a little bit clearer in what he's saying. So he said, are you a nigger, I'm on? And I said, well, why, Virgin, hear me now. First of all, I don't know land named Negro land. First thing. When I try to make it clear, him can even see it for himself. I say, when you want to ask the China man where he come from, he come from China. There's a land, a place called China, where China man come from. If you want to ask the Indian man where he come from, there's a place called India. And it's Indian people come from there. You ask the Caucasian European where he come from, a white man. Him say, him is a European, he come from Europe. You ask the black man where he come from, he says he's a Negro. So I say, where is Negro land? Where on this planet, people? So you see, when we're looking into our identity, we have to link to a landmass because people don't live up into the ear. I don't, well, you know, <laughs> so we get to, yeah, you know what I mean? Running away, you know. I don't know how them can run for themselves. Bob, tell them, you know. So we have to tell them now. You see this concept of a Negro? Marcus Garvey used the word, you know. Because in 1910 and 20, Marcus realized him don't even dare use the word Africa. It is too close to the slavery period, too close to emancipation. At that time, the black people were trying to ask, actually, were in a more escape mode, away from being African. So Garvey set up the UNIA, which was the United Negro Improvement Association, but Garvey set up also the African Community League. Because he knew, he knew he couldn't make that total leap from the plantation back into Collins forward into Collins and Africa again. We're never ready for that yet. So people up to today who call themselves Garveyites, as black as they may think they are, still call themselves Negroes. They don't mean because Garvey calls themselves Negroes, I mean we are Negroes, you know. We can examine things that Garvey failed to examine in depth because Garvey was one brain. One brain, you know, who did all that much. And there's so much more that can be done. So that's why we need other brains. So the reality about Negro now, there's no place called Negro land. If you're a Christian person and you believe in the Bible, God never said, let there be Negroes. So God never make no Negroes. God said, let there be man. And when you look at the word Negro, and you trace the root word, first of all, Negro come from Spanish. Negro. And that come from the Latin. Necro. Well, you go to the Greek. Necro. N-E-C-R-O. And you know what necro mean? You know, you know. All of you know what necro mean, but you can't believe it. You hear about necromancy? You hear about necrophilia? Necro means dead. So what the word negro really means is dead. 
So the people who identify themselves as Negroes are literally walking dead people. No, are you still a Negro? We know of Africa. We, I and I, know of Africa, the continent. I and I is African people. FM broadcasting from Portland, Jamaica. Ready? Ready? Are you ready for this? Are you ready the for ID this? The ID Hardware Supplies presents Labor Day Blue. Labor Day Blue. One sale. week only. From Monday, May 20 to 25, the entire stock is on sale. Save up to 25% off an all item. Huge discounts on paint. Get a gallon of paint for as low as $900. You heard right. $900 for one week only. DRB Block Factory and Hardware Supplies. Port for William Street, Port Antonio. DRB Hardware. Your foundation begins Your foundation here. begins Your here. Foundation begins Save with Portland Credit Union Treasure Chest Youth Savings Competition and get a chance to win big prizes. First place, $35,000 cash. Second place, $25,000 cash. Third place, $15,000 cash. And many other consolation prizes, including computer tablets, cell phones, digital cameras. Save between April 5th and June 28th with Portland Credit Union. Moving ahead and serving you better. For further information, contact us at 993 2608 and 993 2806. Yeah, we're still in the metamorphosis on iWords Sound and Power here on Styles FM 96.1 and 6.7. You can also link up on sizefm.com and see the program streaming live. Their identity and power, they are synonymous. And it's, fund, it's, it's fundamental 
that I and I have an identity that becomes fixed. Because for the last de- five or six or seven or eight or nine or even ten decades from the beginning of the 1900s, from the emancipation process, the African people have been trying to reconnect with exactly who they are. Many have been so uprooted that the word African is equal to the devil. Serious trauma. But nothing lasts forever except the universe. Haha. <laughs> yes, infinity goes on. No beginning, no end. And since the eye is a part of the infinite, yeah, you get the rest of the picture. So we deal with ourselves and we deal with ourselves positively. You see the bird process? I am thinking now. Perhaps after the egg and the sperm connect and start that process of multiplication into its billions. We on the outside here know, we claim that it takes 32 weeks or let us say nine months for that child to emerge. So our theory in this practical world out here is that in nine times four, in 36 weeks, a child will be born. I want to stop and think a little bit now about this process from the fertilization process. And the fetus goes through the changes through nature. Sometimes it looks like, first of all, the, feet, the, the sperm is like a tadpole. And there's an egg. And it goes through a process that at some point the fetus looks like a, a horse. It takes on different animal shapes before it reaches anything that looks like man. And the environment is liquid. So we're not coming out of the dirt. We're not being made by dust. We are being created in a liquid environment. Different concept, different concept, but it's real and it's practical. Now, in that multiplication of cells, there is a, there's, there's a point. There's a point when we on the outside tend to be measuring time on the inside the same way we measure it on the outside. For example, in our construct of time out here, we say 24 hours makes one day. We measure that by sun up, sun down, sun up again. So in our consciousness, in earth time, that is one day. Now, I am saying to the item now, within the movement of that egg and sperm journeying through these various forms of life. I don't know if there's any sun inside to measure time the way we measure it on the outside. So I'm suggesting that maybe time is moving at a different speed during the embryonic em, the embryology and that, that, that process. It's something that the mothers must think about. The fathers don't tend to care because I'm planting the seed and gone. The mother is left now to kind of nurture this thing. So I'm saying to the item now, if we were to expand our thinking and our imagination, and rather than think of nine months inside, just call it nine years. Let us say it is 900 years of evolution to move from one, two cells to the billions of cells. It must take time. And I'm saying nine months in our earth time may not be enough. So maybe something speed up. My virgin call it quantum speed. Maybe there's a movement of time in the womb. Warp speed. Because it's, not a, it's a different universe now, this child coming through now, you know. Moving through time and space in liquid. All you say now, it's when the youth them decide to come out after we say nine months of Some of them come out earlier. Some of them just get tired in there and just decide to come out. Now, when these children come out, you see, we are on the outside. I think we underestimate them. We underrate them. And we don't grow them. Because after traveling and living for so long and coming out and hearing language for so many months and then we just bombard them with blah blah da da talk and then they're pretty baby. That's why they must have pee and do up themselves so much. <laughs> yeah, we must respect the age of our young born. I'm thinking 
together Oh, it was so nice when we were friends Oh, it was so nice when we were friends That's why I'm thinking How we used to be Yes, I'm thinking How it was always you and me Do you remember That night in September Oh, it was so nice When we were friends Oh, it was so nice When we were friends That's why I'm thinking Yeah, so I hope the item thinking, you know. Hope the item thinking, open up the eye, the meditation, and think. Because it's a, it's a divine right. It's an insult to the creator when you don't think. I tell you, item. It's an insult, and you deserve to be punished for not thinking. And part of the punishment for people who don't think is enslavement. <laughs> yeah, you get enslaved. So if you enjoy being a slave, come to Size FM. We'll find work for you. <laughs> yeah, we'll find work for you. But we're saying that as a people, as a people, we need to do some more forward thinking now. If we ease off on that backward thinking. And the white man claims, say, you know, say, when the cricketers, when the first time black man started playing cricket in England, and started doing things where the white man couldn't anticipate, they would say, we don't think forward, we think lateral. Yes, we think lateral, so we do things weird. I am saying we have the power of forward thinking. Yeah, and forward thinking simply means projecting, visualizing, using the imagination. The imagination can be just captured with stories and tales. The imagination is your work lab. And in the imagination, you imagine and you visualize. And you put flesh to what you visualize and you back it up with your desire. Apply your will, success. It is a process. But you see the identity thing? If you're unsure of the self, it's difficult to focus. So you're going to say no. Still coming off the emancipation, we didn't want to say we are Africans. So we went through the colored, no, we went through the Negro thing. Then we went through the colored people. And then we went into the hyphen thing. The, you know, we are soul, soul man and soul woman, and they become African-Americans and hyphenated. And now we are people of color. Wow. You know what I think? If we find something where the white man can't claim. I thought, you know, because we, we left soul and go to Rasta, and we say, yeah, we have it now. <laughs> you think so? All right. So that water down now kind of step on a, a battleground itself. Me, I'm going to suggest something else now. And I want the white man them and the Caucasian man them try and find a way to say that them is this too. It's nothing about our religious identity because anybody can say them is anything. It's nothing about national identity because you can change that. So there are some people now who are trying to change up the sexual thing, call themselves transgendered and trying to bring confusion at that level. But you see the racial level now at the absolute foundation. So here we are in South Carolina self now. Black people. <laughs> So if a white man, we call himself a black man, it might work, you know. But here we say no. We hold on to something that is inside our blackness. We are hold on to the melanin. And we work deal with ourselves as people of pigment. Pigmented people. Not people of color. People of pigmentation. And we can rally around that as an identity. So you either have the pigmentation or you don't. And I say only one drop of African blood enough to make you be an African. One drop that powerful metamorphosis.
Yeah, we have to know our own story. This is Africa in the world of fears. Our story from the black Rastafarian perspective. Our story. And our story has no real beginning, it appears. The beginning, they call it a mystery. And those who have come to Africa to uncover our stories have been telling us that our stories have no basis in reality and that we must accept their tales. So the European has brought into Africa a whole lot of tales. And these tales have confused our stories. Two different things, you know. And these tales are recorded in biblical scripture, in, in, in the literature, tales. Now, most tales are untrue. Most tales are untrue. So as I use them to say, it's a stop tell tale. It means a stop tell lie. But from the African tradition, a story is not a lie. A story is a coded sort of institutional way of passing on information, our oral traditions and our oral history. We call them stories. The stories are not necessarily lies. Our stories are the reality of Africa. Now, the continent, the continent, large continent, invaded by the Europeans in the 15th century and earlier. What I want to make mention of now is this thing that it's just suddenly dawn on me that in our relations, male and female, on the plantations, we weren't, we weren't allowed to have any warm relations with our women, meaning the man them. We didn't have any love up and Africanization of our feelings on the plantation because on the plantation, we were defined as chattel, meaning like a pig and a cow and a goat. So all a man have to do is just make sure he drop some deep sperm and move on to, to Trelawney. And do the same work there and then move the sentence. So the notion of having children wasn't within our framework. We used to breed up women. That was the framework in which we practice our sex as breeders. And today enough men still walk around with a great amount of pride thinking that it's, it's a great status to be classified as a breeder. So I have 14 youth with 12 baby mother. I'm broke. Don't see the money for years. Every week I'm there court for a different mother. No, that, that's not very constructive out of the sexual practices. But here what, what I want to make mention of now, and this is to everybody now, in these sexual practices, there are something that they call sexual positions. All right? Everybody knows what they're talking about because you must take a position if you have sex. But you know, this position that make me really think deep about what's happening when the Europeans came to Africa. We are locked into this thing that is called the missionary pose. Yeah, the missionary pose. I, I, when I was a youth, I used to hear it, and I, it, that phrase alone used to just boggle me, you know. Because I couldn't understand how the people had gone upon mission. And the missionaries is supposed to bring the word of the Lord and turn these heathens into, from Africans into European type of Christians. And yet there's a thing called a missionary pose. You see that pose now? Everybody knows, supposed to know what they're talking about. I am saying, when I look at it in reflection, is almost like a rape position. It seems to me that we, that was how the European held down the black woman in order to rape her and glorify this thing by calling it the missionary pose. <laughs> so now, we the black people who have been captured and brought into the West, we have been told, especially those who are into the church, that this is the position that we must practice our sexual activity. No, I want to tell you why I don't know. Me, of the firm conviction, 
perspective, the black woman in her liberated form is never pinned down by the man. That the gyration of the hips that makes a black woman special. She's unable to operate in that frame when she's pinned down by the hips. But that is the move of a rapist. You ask a black woman, where and how does she feel most satisfied whether she's, whether she's being pinned down or whether she's allowed to be free on top? Economic liberation is a duty I owe to posterity. Great Zimbabwe stands, ancient rocks and firm. Come now, Draco go down. period of time now we have to make sure that the persons who are listening know that I and I conscious that the item listening so locally Narijites <laughs> yes them two Monday and the old community Springbank that daughter and the old community <laughs> yeah and then a quick step abroad and we heal Gary in the Bronx, at Tops, reaching out to people in Connecticut and Hartford and all those places. And then we go right across the Tri-State area to New Jersey. We hear splashing, dashing, wetting them up. <laughs> Splash 94 in New Jersey, sending out the metamorphosis to 13 different cities. Tara, long time I don't hear from you. And Sister Joy and Peter McKenzie and all the people who we can't remember. Metamorphosis is here for the item. So what are I so who young Christy back of the bus? I managed to live in archaeology. Them talking about them make some kind of discovery. I managed to live in anthropology. Zimbabwe come now stand firm. Yeah. Zimbabwe wants. Great Zimbabwe wants. Responding mathematical, elliptical constants in Egypt, Axum, Zimbabwe, and Mexico. Hey, African botanical streams of cotton and corn in America and no. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can you imagine a time when I and I were the masters of mathematics? No, all our youth are running scared when they hear the word mathematics. It's a language, you know. It's a language that allows you to practice the sciences. It's a language. So if you want to do physics, you want to do chemistry, you want to do those type of powerful sciences, you have to understand mathematics. And the Egyptians and the Africans, are we construct things like our pi R square and everything, you know. It sounds alien, you know, because our introduction to these things is like a certain way we don't have no power to grapple with. Our brain can't manage it. It's too heavy. And it's we create it. So all of those knowledge is still within our collective unconscious memory. What we're lacking is the confidence 
will and the faith, not in anything invisible, except the self. If we were to put those forces together, our children will love mathematics. And we can begin to create again, recreate the scientists what we need. I can't tell when last we hear something about an invention. Well, maybe it's happening, but we're not getting the credit. Because our brains are in everything. But the credit seems to come in on the entertainment and sports and breaking those records. Oh, we're not hearing about invention, creativity with technology. The Africans, the black people, these are not alien things to us. To show you something even more serious than that. Since they have uncovered Atlantis, it is up to I and I as a people now to make that link between Atlantis and Africa. Who else can make that connection? Who else can make the link between ancient Africa and ancient Atlantis? The type of people and the mathematics and the crystal pyramids. Tremendous amount of powers and energies. All of we have these things, you know. But we're so caught up into this life after death. Into what will going to happen to us when we die. And we, those who are living realize that when people die, nothing don't change on the earth, you know. <laughs> the earth going on the same way. People just die. So the important thing now is how do we reconstruct ourselves here in the present? How do we get our, our children to explore ideas and concepts in physics? What is a boomerang? How it work? What about astronomy? Anybody understand about the stars anymore? What is the connection between Sirius and the Earth? These are things that we knew inside out as a people. Now it looks like it's a very strange feel. And we look frightened when the man tell us say, life is on the next planet. And we fret about the kingdom to come. And we lose our consciousness right here. So I sent to the item now. African history. Our story. We have to connect the dots in a way that set us free. And ignorance and fear is some of the forces that keep us in this state of mentation. So we embrace the pyramid culture. And I ask in the ones and ones out there now, begin to do a little reading and researching on the African continent and about Atlantis. Who were the people who created this powerful civilization right here in the Atlantic? I recognize now, you know, the European man now is searching Mars for life. And he's searching inside the earth for life. He really want to find out really where black people come from, you know. That is his great mystery. We think we come from a garden. <laughs> we are right with that. He's not. He recognizes that we are powerful beings. That the crystal pyramids in the, in the Atlantis show us that we knew about space travel. As a people. Yeah, hard to accept now. We think it's something novel. Because we're also locked into the belief that all earth life was created on this earth. You see, the Mars probe is going to shake up a whole heap away. And we have to find a way to resolve science with the religious beliefs, which are crumbling ever so slowly. <laughs> Uh, you see the people that I know who have been texting me continuously and I've been reading them profusely. <laughs> it is so difficult to respond to all of the texts them. You know what I want to do? I'm going to have a nice young lady in here to begin to read my texts for me. Any volunteers? Just 4531444. Styles <laughs> FM. I'm on block and we'll give you a, a quick interview. See if you can hold them hours here. Whoa, phone ringing already. I wonder. I wonder. Repatriate and make we take it all. No land for you and I. I remember, no, no, no. Four, four lines will be open at 11 o'clock. Yes, the four lines. Open at 11 o'clock. You can give me a link 453 1444. Sharing your view. Some 
Yeah, the metamorphosis looking into ourselves through the continent that they call the dark continent. And when people hear the word dark, <laughs> they think of the worst things. As I said earlier, people don't people only pray when night comes, them don't pray when the sun comes out, because them don't free them dead when the sun shining. But somehow when dark comes, all of a sudden everybody get panicky. Wondering, will they make it through the night? <laughs> what a thing. And listen, the night is really the movement of the planet, you know. And we're not going to the next section of the construction of the deconstruction of the myths. There's this thing about dark and light that we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at. Because as a youth, we were told that Africa was a dark continent. And of course, the opposite of dark is what? No, it's not white. See, that's a part of the trick now, you know. You think the opposite of dark is white it's not white it's light so in that confusion now we think that the people who what them call it white we say that now that no they're the opposite of black it's a whole little long linguistic confusion you now that no people are opposites no people are opposite so black people can't be opposite of white people so who's opposite of the chinese <laughs> there's no opposition except in the meditation and it has been created for this division and this sort of we can't find my identity because every time we move this thing said it's part of we so yeah it's enough things within the darkness and the light and we think that the dark and the light are also struggling we think it's a battle and they will put good to one and evil to the other so we're saying good and evil struggling Darkness and light struggling, black and white struggling, one line up. If you really look carefully now at the idea of darkness and light, look at how the sun operates. Night and day is not in conflict. Night and day is never in conflict. They actually complement each other. Because the plants couldn't live under 24 hours of sunshine, you know. The plants need a break too. So you need the night for rest and regenerate the insects the plants all of these life forms can't take 24 hours of the sun so the night 
doesn't battle with the sun. The night does cooperate because darkness and light are complementary forces. They make with things say they're opposition, binary thinking, slavery. So we lock into this black and white thing. Every time we move, every time we talk about the world, people in the world know. I talk about the white people. Why white people do this? So, so Chinese people don't exist. And Indians don't exist. So we break out of the dichotomy of this darkness versus light. As a matter of fact, we tend to call people who are ignorant very dark. Oh, you're so dark and ignorant. When I say no, it's when you're very it's when you behave white. You're ignorant. Because you're behaving outside of yourself. Hey, what do you think about um eating me in the mind more, catch her? But bye bye too. <laughs> oh boy, it's just all about being black, eh? In. You tuned in? Yeah, my brother. Just go on take in the metamorphosis. Andy Ray. Cincinnati, Baba. Baba in Cincinnati. Long time, you know. Hail to the people in Vienna. Buongiorno. Good morning. The Japanese and the man in the middle of the USS Sasebo on the base there. Hail up to all the military forces taking in the metamorphosis and here to dark eyes especially just go and keep it out yeah Alicia, hope you're listening. If you're not listening, you're not here. You're not here. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs>
Yeah, this is the anthem by the Blind Genius, which shows that the eye of observation and power really rests inside the brain. Yes, Stevie sees nothing visually, physically, but the man see the universe, man see the cosmos using the inner eye. So we all have access to it, you know, the pineal. You know that there are certain foods that you eat that can destroy the pineal. People know this now, you know. Yeah, there are certain foods you eat that works against your own pineal eye. You have to check that out on your own. Yeah. So now we're looking at the, the myths and the fables and the allegories. And I want to use this segment, you know, to look at something that is the first time I really think, even I myself, have found the time to <laughs> check out all this thing influencing even myself and imagine it how it affects others. No, because we have been given the Bible as our book of truth and the word of God is supposed to be unquestionable. It sort of sent me to look at the Jesus is God story. But that seems to be the whole thing on earth. There's an effort to prove that Jesus is God. All that argument have been put forward. That he is the son of God and he's three in one and one in three. And he was flesh who became that and humanity and all sort of philosophical and convoluted discourses surrounding this savior. People have given up their lives. There was one person in Jamaica who the government was after and some people came over with some t-shirts saying that they would die for this man like or they would die for Jesus. So, the image is there and it's clear. All right. So, the most mystifying thing about this Jesus character, well, there are three areas. There's the birth, there is the death, and the resurrection. And the important part, the other thing I want to look at now is what we're going to call the ascension. We always talk about the birth, and people argue for years, say, it never did go so on. Is it really literal? Is it practical? And we argue whether the virgin who really had sex or whether the mother was this. And we go around for years upon years arguing things that we don't know. The next thing we argue about now is the death. Did he die on the cross? Oh, we have evidence of him dead. Who was there? And it goes on. That going on for the last 2,000 years too. But in my looking into the thing now, I never really look carefully at the thing called the ascension yet, you know. I always just stop at the resurrection and leave it at that. But the ascension part is probably the most critical part to the foundation of the belief system. The ascension. Because you see, if you don't accept the ascension, the thing don't work. If you accept the birth, it's one. If you accept the resurrection, it's another. But I never did know say. After them said them take him off of the cross and him resurrect, I never know him to disappear for 40 days. He must go get treatment. But whatever it is, you know, what is amazing to I is that after 40 days, this resurrected being comes back. Now, as far as I know now, you know, this was a man them say who was nailed on the cross and he bled. That means him have blood vessels. And my blood in them system and blood run through him vein. And that when them put the nail in them hand, blood come out. So we have, me have to say that this is a human being. But hear what amazes me. And somebody must can help. Number is 453. <laughs> 1444. I must accept now that this virgin comes back. He had us in front of him, brethren. And just goes straight up into the sky. No, that to me is absolutely fantastic. So when he was rising now off of the ground, I would have said to myself, that this man here must have on a jetpack. If he do have on a jetpack, he no not overcome gravity. All right, so this man rising up into the sky and all of it turn up here to watch. And if you look at more pictures now drawn of the ascension, you see, everybody look up, looking up into the sky. And I know in my conscious brain must accept that a man 
who was made of flesh and blood, who breathed oxygen and let off carbon dioxide, was going to rise now up into the air. So I'm to myself now, how is this man going to breathe? Where is this man going? So am I going to say, boy, I don't need a breath anymore. He can just go straight up. So I said, how high up? Did he pass the level where the space station is? Did the ascension take Jesus beyond into this father of the kingdom? Because most of our meditation is locked up in this story. Because we accept this ascension. And man will tell you now, say, Jesus is now sitting with his father by the right hand in heaven. How many people really hold that? And how many people can afford to shake that? Think about it now, you know. A man rising straight up in the atmosphere. Till you can't see him again, he'll disappear. I hear so the higher you go, the cooler it get to. That's why the astronauts them have on space suit. So me now as a grown man, a black man, an African who build the pyramids and know science and mathematics, I know I'm forced to accept that a man who was made of flesh can just go straight up in the sky and just disappear from sight and just sit down by the right hand of his father. Wow. Great imagination. Alongside Mr. Kavilas. Now Blizzard is the man that walking on the coast of them God that has seen the sky. Now stand the ways of sinners. Oh, religion. Why is the light to laugh the land? And the laugh the land doesn't meditate day and night. So we're looking at the thing that we have been given now, this thing called the Ascension. Now, because we're locked into the book of Psalms, what the records show that is 1,000 years before even the birth of Jesus. It was David, them say in Psalms 110, that prophesied about this Ascension of a prophet. And is it true we rate up David so much and rate up Psalms? We fall in line with the story. What is the ascension now? There's a thing called the Nicene Creed that was created by the Catholics. This is this is conference, a conference out of a conference to decide on the, whether Jesus was a human being or whether he was God or whether he is both. This man sit down and discuss and come to a conclusion. And no, not, not, it's nothing that is given. It's reasoning. This man think it out and come to a conclusion that suit them. So them say in the Nicene Creed that Jesus was resurrected and then he ascended after 40 days and after that ascension he sits at the right in the heavens with his father by the right hand. Now, 
I don't know who really can sit in a heaven to know exactly which part Jesus even sit down. Or we know he's not sitting on the left hand of, of the Father. We don't know anything more than what they tell us. But we can re-examine what we have been told and define for ourselves whether it makes sense or no. Is it a tale? <laughs> Is it a tale? We have gotten so many European tales, biblical tales, that we have to separate the tales from the African stories. The ascension is an important part of the Christian philosophy. Because if you don't accept the ascension, then you don't accept that there's, a, there's life in the kingdom of heaven. Because what this is supposed to show is that the humanity side of Jesus is accepted into the kingdom. And so you know who of this human side now. This is what I'm going to give you a chance. Just believe. Just believe. So we say a bag of prayers. Whole of desires will build up. I won't finish building up. We say in, in Jesus' name. I don't know where that go. Truly, we we'll build up all this energy and this desire. I will finish the prayer. If we send it off now. We we'll just stamp it in Jesus' name. I think that's where it follows. You know, I think I just drop out of the post box. I don't think it got to Jesus. We have to begin to stamp onto it now in I name. Yeah, send out the prayer in I name. Here with their response. Yes, we're getting stronger. Strong. And Babylon are getting weaker. weaker. Yes, we're stepping up stronger. stronger. Coming harder. Ain't looking back, feeling stronger. Ready to launch the attack. Do you remember when we were the cream of the top? Is the At the carbon, we got they took us away from Africa with an intention to kill our culture. To the power of the most high, our mental capacity is wider. Coming harder, ain't looking back, feeling stronger. Ready to launch the attack. Remember when we were the cream of the coming school. So this heavenly kingdom now that has his father and that son, son sitting by the right hand side and the father sitting up there, mighty in his throne. I would have think say that would be the beginning of some kind of family. I was here about the Holy Family, you know. But we are here about the Father and the Son and stop this up. I don't understand how can you have a family with only two males in it. How can that be a family with only a father and a son? So you see, that's a dis dysfunctional unit, you know. That's a dysfunctional unit. That can't work. You're leaving out the cream of the crop. You can't leave out the feminine. How you can you do that? So while we don't here on earth now struggling to get into this kingdom with the father and them son, mind when I try going to people. What me say? Mind when I try go. Especially you want to go there after you're dead. With, and you have no evidence you go in there, you know. Look here. We could just re-energize yourself into the present. We could think about the kingdom of earth, which is the dominion of man. And we could leave that father and son to navigate and help the astronauts. Their plight. Dancing feet. 
sun is shining, the weather is sweet now. Make you wanna move your dancing feet, yeah. This is Afrocentric Views and News, and the lines are open 4531444 or the text theme number 4531444. You will be engaged on air if you choose at this moment. So think about it. Feel free to engage the metamorphosis live, live in red, green, and gold. Yes, I just I try work up my books. <laughs> yes, the metamorphosis. We are into the views and news. What's going on? Well, you know, the world is still sort of grappling with the traumas that are unfolding in Syria. And the fact that, let us say, war is a sort, a sort of on the horizon in that place. We, at this distance, feel kind of far away from it. But if we recall what was happening in Baghdad and the effect it had on our economy, we cannot be too aloof of what's happening in the bigger globe. So there's, a, there's, there's an attempt to, by the world power, there is one power now that is claiming to be the world police, the US of A. There's another country who is insisting that they cannot be policed. They should not be policed. They have enough economic and military strength to contradict the Americans. This is the Chinese. Chinese are standing firm in their philosophy, in their identity. Now they have their economics and their military and their space program. The European man after to sort of just back off now and show respect. And what the European respect is force. That in respect force. Now what is the force of the black people? It can't be religious. A religious force don't carry us anywhere more than into war amongst ourselves. So what Marcos told us of a developed power in every aspect, in the military and in the economic, in the scientific, in the educational, we must search and work toward developing our own power base. Now the United States is a country that feels that its ideas of about democracy and governance is what all peoples in the world should accept. 
not much different from a religious group who insists that their view of God is what everybody should accept. So the religious and the political have a connection. And in that connection, both fields are controlled by ministers. We have ministers of government, we have ministers of, of religion. And we have to check out who these ministers are. What is really their role in maintaining the status quo? And how do they practice the divide and rule principle that keeps the population separated? So in the United States, it's Republican and Democrat, but it is really run on racial lines. So the black people in America, usually when things get tough, they feel it first. Things are getting tough economically. And so the people who have who they call of color now have to be scrambling around to find what we call employment. What is the solution? How do we generate resources? Now, I'm not living in America now, so that is not really where I can apply myself to a solution. Here on the island, what we need is a liberation of the land. So we asked my engineer earlier today, and we're asking everybody to think about this. You are given 24 hours to govern this island. And in that 24 hours, you are allowed to pass two laws that would have an effect on the country positively for the next 20 years. Where to go? What would you suggest Okay, you are the leader for two for one day and you have the power to enact two laws. And these laws must have an effect on the country beneficially over the next ten years. What would you want to put in place? So when I ask my human dynamo, <laughs> oh give him say the land right away. Say the land. What about the land? I am thinking now that I'm right. Maybe we should have a a system in place now where the lands of this country, remember now we're into this politically independent country you now, yet when you look at who owns the land of this island, two things pop up in front of you. The church and the crown. You ask yourself, what crown? <laughs> Queen Elizabeth crown. In other words, now we on this independent island still battling for space and who controls the territory the church and the queen so you say what well, my engineers say, say if you get governance for a day you just take it away from them <laughs> and each citizen of this country will be entitled to half an acre of land you don't think to make a change you don't think people with a sudden start think about the value of their of Jamaica now now that they own a piece of Jamaica you know, the people that defend that to the debt. Land is the basis of power. Marcus did tell us. Metamorphosis.
want land. <laughs> they want land. You know what I'm saying? We're not fooling ourselves because what really makes the wheels turn in the society is money. But guess what happened now? You see, if you have land, suddenly you have access to money. Because people will give you a loan and hold the land in this thing called collateral. So, you see, you see how, you, how you kick started? You have to have the land. You have to have the vision of what you're going to do with the land. You can plant on it, you can build on it, you can even rent out a piece of your land and generate revenue to do so. Hey, look here, them people. All of us go down on Duke Street, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. We're not, really, no, we're not really promote any social disturbance, you know. But we need an awakening. People must stop asking for jobs and start asking for land. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, we just start a new crime in the country. Land. Land. We want land. And you know, say, things would have changed, you know. Because the focus will be more into your own self development. All the things in the country will change. The criminal will have fine work. Yeah, whole lot of things. Otherwise, look here. This island can be liberated from its own downfall. We have enough space here. Everybody can live in Kingston St. Andrew. Imagine over one million people living in a little, in a little, two little parish there. Eh? Over a million people on top of one island like Rotten Roach. That's what breeds the violence. People don't have no space to think. If you lie down and you think too loud, the man will run next zinc fence here. Yeah, yeah, if you think too loud, a man can hear you through the, through the thin cardboard walls and the people call them homes. So we're saying to the people who govern this place here now, we are saying liberate the land. You see, the church now, and the church own the land in Jamaica, you know. The church, the same blessed church. <laughs> we say, church, leg of the land. If you love the people, and you want to help the poor. Don't just give them food and things from food for the poor. Give them land. Yeah, give them the land. And I better say, after a while, them don't even need you. Yeah, they run with food for the poor. Because the people will no longer be poor. People would have them wealth and them self-esteem and them self-respect. Building generational resources on the earth. No time to build anything in the sky. Black people don't get weary. Them take off the shackles and chain and say them free win. But we still on a mental slavery. On a sing with the star chill passing, my lord. Fire upon rum. People fall on them scissors and go. Black people want go home. On Mount Zion and the righteous throne. You go yo, you go yo. Yeah, so we have to talk to the people them now who control the real estate. So we have to talk to the Pope. The Pope is the head of the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church controls most of the lands in Jamaica. Now the world is also moving to what they call a new world order. And in this new world order, it is a Pope that they're trying to install as the one ruler. The Catholic Church is strong in that. And I'm saying to the Catholic Church in Jamaica, we now watch the Pope out there. We want the land here in Jamaica. And we want the Pope in the Vatican to support the cause of freeing up the land. Because the man kissed the foot of some prisoners and kissed the feet of women. So I'm sure say I'm not fight against women. And I'm saying I'm not fight against the poor. So the church must take the guidance from their leader. And let go the land in a Jamaica. And better say the paradise with a change. With a move from the murder capital to capital of just bliss. Production capital. Hemp around the place. Yeah, hemp factories. So this island, let's tell you something now. Some more look as if when the people get into governance, they sort of, sort, of, sort of lose their vision. If they had one before. If they had one before. I am saying there's enough resources in Jamaica to make the IMF deal go away. We no longer have to live under an IMF state. We can live under a hemp state where every parish grows hemp. 
You imagine that from factory to from the farm to the factory, town and country, hemp for the healing of the nation. Carlo. Radio, turn on your radio. Please turn on your radio. Please turn on your radio. Hello. Greetings. Turn, please turn your radio down as you speak. Greetings. Okay, Eli. Eli. Welcome, on, brother. Uh, everything is everything, my brethren. How is the yeah, eye? Man, everything is everything. How is the eye? I can't hear you so well now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Can okay. you loud and clear? All right. So what are you saying now? What are you saying about what are you saying? Huh? What are you saying about what you're saying? What me there? Yeah, man. What are you saying? You depend on the ear, you know. Uh, at the end, at the end, my listen to you, but if you want to my listen to the program, and I want to go call me and talk me out, man. She talk me out long, so we are good out of the program, man. But my listen to you, while I go talk about the end, and um. And I've been, I've been thinking about it, you know, because we've been talking about it for a while now. Yes, sir. And, and the boost, the boost that it would be, just um, the, some of the existing um, industries that we have, like, um, like just the tourism. You know, you have, you, you, you have, you will have people that come to Jamaica now just to kind of kick back in the Malika Earth Cafe. All right. And, and, you and, know, by, and, and just, and just. And embrace that culture that we are known for around the world. All right. You understand that so, rest of culture that, 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 that the rest of the world knows. That. You know what I mean? As a reality. You know, if we don't, if we we'll just embrace it, embrace ourselves, and, and, and just be ourselves, that we really can find some of the power that we have today. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, so where, 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 where are you shouting from? I mean, I'm man from cinema. I'm talking about man from um, Delaware. Oh, oh, the old man Delaware who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me, that man. Yes, I, yes, yeah. I. It's every child listen to the program. Uh, every week, man, because it's, it's challenging. It's challenging okay. to the brain. And, you know, we, you know, we like those challenges. You know? All right. But I like the more people call it uh, and, and ask questions, you know? True, 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 true. Well, the, the, I, the, I open the door, you know. I'm making it known that it's possible now. So, so you go, you know. Sorry, man. Not no longer with asking questions. True, true. When you ask questions, you learn and you grow. All right. You don't ask questions. You don't even ask questions. You don't even ask questions. You don't even ask questions, you know. Yeah. And that's it. So, when that is there, you, you get away from this thing. And get it to grow, you know. Ask yeah. questions. You know? I, I'm sure your opinion. Yes, that's a word. So, yeah, we just want to interpret that little thing about the herb and and, and, and yeah, uh, and turning that industry to, to to maybe correlate with the with the tourist industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, which, which need which need a little which need a, a little oomph. It need a little a little juice in to car. Definitely, you know? definitely. We're trying to do the same old thing, thing over and over and, and over. over. And in the Netherlands, they do it, you know, in Amsterdam, you know, where, right. where they have them herb legal and, and people go there and they go to them ganja cafes. Of course, you don't have to regulate this, but, 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 but it, it, it's possible. But hear me now. I mean, hear me now. There yeah. is a slight difference, though, between the, the herb cafe and the hemp industry. Yeah, I know that still. That's <laughs> yeah. Right there, right there. yeah, because I see you up and now. It's a true woman. To the Roman soldiers, my pursue the smoke. We just want right. to left them a chase the smoke, and we just go and build up right. the industry with the MC. Yeah. You know. True. True. All right, that's what I deal with. Better man for sis. Healing all the people in Delaware and Delaware who and Delaware what. <laughs> Peace and love, my brethren. All right, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, that is the outside link on the metamorphosis, brethren, saying that it sounds. Feasible that here in Jamaica we could change the rhythm of our lives economically, socially, politically by engaging in farming. And the industry that we want to promote is the hemp industry, not smoking ganja, 
No time to chase, make police chase you anymore. We're tired of that. And them chase it and take it away and burn it. We want something where they must come and look on it and say, boy, I love some of them money that we hide them and get half fighting. You know? We want something legitimate. So, you know, so the money made by the seed and the money is made by the stock. In other words, now we can use the seed and make butter. We can make oil. We can make paper. We can use the stock to make cloth, fiber. It's 2,500 products made from hemp. All we have to choose is four or five. And each parish run with two of them. Enough youth will come off of the streets. I am not defend the down press. It's a must. You don't need a hand I fight now first. Got everything them say them right for the one belong to us. My father don't tell I and I everything shall fall to I and I is a must. So Babylon set the liberty every day and then one bite the dust. My lord, you don't have to say you're sorry. I want to hear Sankofa School in St. Thomas. Sister Sandra, she texts me to ask me, how can she go about getting the hemp industry moving in Jamaica too? Ah, <laughs> great. So, building up some desire. Huh. Yeah, we're building up some desire in the mind with proper information. No, you see the big ship them where you say out of sea? And you see some rope but they see them tie them off the anchor some long rope is hemp make that yes hemp as a matter of fact in the united states the money that was what, what they used to make money in the 17th century was hemp paper hemp them used to make the american money and the constitution written on hemp hey look here it's only we here playing the fool you know we only playing the fool we are sitting on a diamond mine and it doesn't take much infrastructure to develop the hemp industry. There's a land, you don't need no pharmaceutical, you don't need no drugs, you don't need no pesticides. We have, look here, not only Jamaica, you know, this could be a thing for the Caribbean. It's somewhere African countries could take up this project and grow hemp as part of the economy. It's not a Jamaica thing. It's a black people thing now. How can black people set up their economies based upon the same agriculture but linking it now to industry? And we have the hemp plant going wild across the planet. Those of you who believe in the Christian God, is a Christian God say let there be trees. And there were trees. And in the garden, there were trees. And there was a cannabis tree in the garden too. And the hemp tree. Just that they never have no rope. They never need to build. There's no need for rope. Listen, listen to my people. We're not going to stop until we get something tangible on the ground. Meaning even a quarter acre as a pilot project right here in Portland. Well, some people begin to express the ability to be part of this revolution. The growing of hemp. Oil. Butter. Paper. Rope, fiberglass, uh, dynamite, make outer hemp. What are we waiting for? The banana is crushed. Sugar is no longer king. Let hemp rule. Styles FM. Styles FM.
The fire, fire going on. There are different way in Jamaica in the economy now. We have some systems that are raking, that are falling apart under duress. The transport system, the medical system, the electrical supply system. Most of the systems that we have are collapsing under a whole heap of pressure. One of the systems that we need to pay attention to to alleviate the distress here is the energy system and we have been saddled with a company called the JPS for decades on this island now the greatest cost to the co this government is the cost of fuel and the greatest cost to the consumer is also fuel so in that distress part of the resolution I would think is to find a way to bring more players into the marketplace more players to sell electricity to our population in other words now it's about time we break up the monopoly of the JPS years ago we had a TOJ telephone company of Jamaica who had a monopoly and you should squeeze away. You should murder away without any regret until there was a deregulation process. And other companies came on stream and eventually telephone rates fell and everybody had access to telephones. You see, the light system here in Jamaica is a wicked thing to have one company providing light for our entire nation at this level. So we should think about breaking up the monopoly and allowing light to be to be provided by other servers even at a regional level so a place like St. Thomas Portland, St. Mary these three parishes could be locked into perhaps one provider the same thing for the parishes in western Jamaica so we need more than one electrical service provider right now to take the whip off the people's back because every move that is made, it is the people who feel it. The company speaks about their profits, trying to have more profits. It's not a matter of having no profits, you know. They're just trying to have more. So it's the electrical thing. The region again, the Caribbean, to be thinking solar. Why is it we cannot have a regional solar agency? Why we can't? You know, say if other persons were living in this region, they might use up the resources much better than we do it. Yeah, we, we have to use what we have. And we have a lot of stuff around us. But we have to do it in a collective way. Because no man is an island, and the islands by themselves need support. So electricity should be a Caribbean agenda. It, it should be something that the CARICOM people deal with. How do we get solar energy across the Caribbean? It would be much cheaper if all the Caribbean countries came together to set up a policy for solar energy. It must become cheaper if we approach it as a region. Regional strength is what we need. You know, Marcus Garvey spoke about Pan-Africa. Garvey also spoke about the Pan-Caribbean. Everybody ignored that. But the time is now. Pan-Caribbeanism, that could be part of our way forward. What's coming up? that Maradona has been able to do. And he's hoping he will again here. And it's a brilliant run. It's one of the world's great goals. We get away first time. Tyson Gay right alongside Usain Bolt. But here he goes. Streaking away already. It's Bolt all the way. He's looking round at Gay. Watch the clock. It's gold for Bolt. And again. He's done it again. A new world record for Usain Bolt. They say lightning doesn't strike twice. The world belongs to 
Bolt. Berlin belongs to Bolt. 9.58. Yes, 9.58. Can it go? Can it go lower? Well, as a young man gets stronger and wiser, it is possible that he could go faster. Yes, it is a melanin that is creating these, transmitting the messages at super speed. Yes, neural, neural messages are sent to the body at super speed because of the melanin. Now, the primary school meet, as I said earlier in the last program, I found it a very interesting thing in Jamaica. The nursery of our athletic prowess. We see Chilean, rather the pocket rocket, has just launched her own foundation, which means Usain Bolt has a foundation, Asafa Powell, Veronica Campbell Brown, or the pocket rocket. These are the athletes who are using their intelligence in combination with their athletic prowess to create a foundation. So them looking ahead. So people who think forward, move forward and set things to meet the inevitable. So sideways thinking now, because we have lateral thinking, you know. Yeah, man, you just go sideways, <laughs> really go forward, you know. And you know, I go back, yes, yes, I want to speak. Yeah, the athletes are showing that sports is a vehicle for transformation. And they really, I mean, I really feel blessed to know that this generation of runners are not just running for running's sake. They know that the career has a timeline on it. And they know that they have to do certain things within the career. And they are setting it up for life after the career. Absolutely brilliant. And it's took, it has taken us this amount of years for our sportsmen and entertainers. Our entertainers are also setting up things, their own studios, and setting things that their your youths can come. I wonder if styles is anything like that. <laughs> yes. So this, maybe this is a model I'm following and we don't know. <laughs> but the reality is that entertainers, sports persons, you have to begin to look at your life when the career is over. It's not a very easy thing to do, you know, because you're in the height of it. That's why it's good to be surrounded you know, by people whose heads are clear. People who can think clearly. If not, and you're surrounded your head, say, by clouded headed people, when your career is over, you're broke. No investment, no sound. And all of a sudden, now you're this X thing, this farmer great. You farmer this, farmer that. Boy, I beg your money, you no. Know? Boy, the money is good, you know. You want to say, wait, wait, wait. Boy, I'm down, no. Look, it's about time to move away from that. It's a footballer's time to straighten up also. When you take the lead, make sure you can maintain it. Oh Somebody said we must have some hemp seminars. You know, the hemp also make oil, fuel, that's cheaper than the regular thing we were using. Hey, hemp seminar, I like that one. Endorsed by Styles FM. I read. I can lead it, hold on or come from the middle of the back Or even make a move from the back but Like a champion horse, bubbling on the track I'm giving everything I've got No more sense, you jump up on If you can't hold on, of one coming from the back And kicking up a star Looking over your shoulders, the crowd is on the heel You're running out of stamina, it start to reveal You shouldn't test the champion, now you need to dare I'm gonna show you up for what you It's time for the reggae boys to put on their reggae uniforms again. 
I understand that there's a game coming up in Bahamas. The Reggae Boys versus the Tottenham Hotspurs. People who watch English football will know about Tottenham. But the game is a very low-key sort of publicized game because people generally don't even know how the match I play. And the MLS clubs now, these you are know the clubs that are in the United States, and we have a couple of players there. These clubs are now unwilling to release the players for this friendly match because to them, this game don't count. And the players are contracted to the clubs. And just like Nasredi, who played for Jamaica in the first match, played very well and then got injured in the second game, it's really a club that takes up the responsibility of rehabilitating the player. Because the club own the player. It's for them property. And they define when they should allow the property to represent their country because the country not really pay in the players. So that happens now. When that happens now, oftentimes the man who come play for Jamaica don't play with no passion. They don't give it that 150% effort because they are protecting themselves as well. That they can go back to their clubs and continue to earn. So it's important in the building of the football that we have what we call now local based players. And from these players now you will expect a certain level of passion and commitment and fight and verve all things that make up a national psyche but our reggae boys program is very diffused the players are from the north american league they're from the english league second division and the local players are not there very very hard to play with passion i wonder if these players know the anthem yet Civilization is not complete without its art, the highest form of expression of human intelligence. You have become complacent, sitting down and allowing the other nations to run away with everything. You have become a bunch of consumers. You are creators. Rise up, mighty people, accomplish what you will. Without confidence, you're twice defeated in the race of life. Let's look away the voices that gave the people pride. Now we're plunging into darkness. We all will have to play our part, make a bold start, every district, tell every artist. Media houses, we know this, you love support, it's not this, how so much alcohol in our parties. While the girls are broke out, and this up over, she drink, knock her out, now she no care with them crap her up. It's times like this. Press up, pack up, now the grave, them mag up, pack up, dead. Them look the national bird wing. Sell we out, clean, me not think we own a clout, damn thing. Jam rock, why we giving in to the trick, where them a trick, we from the beginning. Parents, you need to wake up from the slumber, bring this with children, blood, them is running. It's the Yeah, the metamorphosis continues. We are all um, in the final half an hour. Things just drifting on. Also, want to say to my listeners that you know we are motivated to support both of people who call, people who text, 
and ultimately the people who find it necessary to even be part of the sponsorship potential. So if you are interested in the metamorphosis and you like an hour, you could be part of the sponsorship. You like the whole program? You could sponsor the whole program. You like a section? Yeah, so open it up because the type of energy that is needed to keep things on the move. So, woman and man, fundamental to black people existence. If there were no women, I would not be here. And I don't think I want to live in a world of all men. So the complementary struggles that we have been put into, we have been, first of all, set up as opposites. In this binary thinking, we have male and female as opposites. We also think that we are of the opposite gender. So in this oppositional thinking, there is no room for complementarity. It's the either or either mentality. If we break away from that and recognize the unity between the male and the female, particularly at the brain level, because at the level of the brain, one section of the brain is female, one section is male. So we have two brains in the one head. Yeah, we have two hemispheres. So when the black man can unite both hemispheres to function as one unit, and truly the man would have re re regained their power because in this context a man would not be just simply the male it would be the race of black people would be able to use the powers of their pineal eye use the glands within them to the maximum if we were to break down this psychological divide in ourselves in our misunderstanding of male being the opposite of female so it's complementary thinking we're searching for. And so we should be looking for persons that complement us. Yeah, people that complement our ways, we should find people that we are in harmony with. Oftentimes, relations are based upon just instant feelings that are set upon sexual vibrations. Now, once these initial vibrations are satisfied, then we have to face the reality of who the person is. In other words, the relationship has to be based not on the sexual vibration only, because that will fade away with time. So we have to begin to explore now the inner being of the person. So it can be a good idea to start with the head first you know, and work down. Yeah, we can build a relationship from the head down rather than from the organs of sexuality up to the head. Because by the time we reach your head, we don't know another. We don't explore and exhaust each other sexually that the level of the intellect, the level of the mind and thinking, we don't get a chance to go there. In our relations, man, we could start it from the thought process. We could enter the woman through her brain. Very unusual entrance because she always expects us to enter through the nunzne. If we enter through the brain, it will be very easy in the long run to overstand the powers of the nun's name. So we send to the man them, lift up your meditation. The pineal tree, the pineal gland that's at the top of the tree is what we must use to motivate our actions. We are too often driven by the sexual glands. There is great energy and power, but if you explore your own body, the energy that starts at the sexual glands goes straight up the tree, straight up to the pineal eye, and they return straight down to the gonads again. It's a cycle. What we want to do now in building relations, we begin to build a relationship from the top down. So you see, when you meet a, re a daughter, you see, rather than keep looking at how she walk, look at how she think. Listen to how she reason. And it's not just about the man. We're talking also to the female. We could try and approach each other from the head down to the foot.
Lords of Lords and Savior. 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 Yeah, into the Rastafari vibrations in the final section. You know, there is a Rastafari organization right here in Portland. And these is really some daughters really at the core of it. And what they're promoting is a summer camp. Portland summer camp. It's going to be running from August 3 to 17. And the more immediate event is a Labor Day project. So the Portland Youth Farmers will be having a Labor Day project on the 23rd of May at Clear Spring. Clear Spring is a little district outside of Port Antonio going east. And this summer thing is a very important event because the youths are learning a certain type of responsibility. They're learning to get close to the soil. And this, maybe these youths are going to show them about the hemp. Hmm. So it's the Portland Rastafari Craft Production Center. And they are the motivators of the cultural summer camp. So the youths in Portland, if you want to be a farmer, Labor Day, Clear Spring, Port Antonio, just tune in. Yes, Charles Hills, I see your textbook writing. I see your Facebook comments. Enough things I say. We mean that there are male male families. We're not in the I and I culture. We're not saying that there are none in all, but I and I don't practice that, my brother. Mr. Joy, we hear you and we are working assiduously.
Yeah, metamorphosis. Hope you eye them find and finding the right vibrations within themselves. And you know, one writer told me that him listening to the program and it scaring the hell out of him. <laughs> yeah, because um certain things that as a youth he was told never to question. He's getting the courage to look into it and go to bed and wake up and realize that he's still here. And so that fear of dying is being removed quietly. And it's an important thing to improve your knowledge. You have to remove fear. And the fear is about anything, you know. The greatest fear is fear. Yeah, and if you begin to free yourself, you're not going to get rash and careless, you know. But you begin to become freer in your own thinking. And stop thinking about the consequences after you die. What's going to happen to this thing that they call the soul? Well, a man asked me about my soul today, you know. Well, I was a little daughter. Well, yesterday in the library. I was doing a little bit of reading and it engaged me on some talk and some Christian talk. I always want to talk to me about it. I don't know when people see me, they must speak as I need to be saved. <laughs> Something just hit them that look here. One woman passed me to say, um, surrender. I want to say surrender. I realized that, you see, when you get baptized, it's really surrender, you surrender, you know. I mean, this woman just said to me, just a surrender, because she see me, I try to figure I want to be saved. But it's a concept of surrendering. And baptism, maybe you look at baptism different. Because that is really the ultimate sign of your being captured. Once you baptize, you're captured. Yeah, man, you have given up your will to become, to follow the will of this thing you baptize under. That's a serious process, you know. And the christening now just make you completely white. So I don't want anybody to try to save me from hell and damnation. Save me from poverty. Save me from poor health. Save me from shelterlessness. And save me from unemployment. <laughs> That's where I want my salvation. But the thing about the soul, when the doctor asked me where my soul is, I said, under my foot bottom. She needed dead with love. I said, yeah. And I recognize that the soul under your foot bottom is like the mole on your head top. It's two very sensitive spots. You can't catch coal in you know, your body through both of them. So I'm not perplexed about my soul. I know my soul there. The people who are trapped into saving this soul concept is only know me want to think different. Yeah, because this thing you're trying to save, is it, is it, does it exist in reality? And would you not be better off saving some of your resources to invest in the land that your children can live better when you're gone? Are that too practical? Maybe that's too practical. But I is a practical man. Yeah, protect his children, keep them from falling. Gonna make me stronger. Yeah. Yeah. The reason for me to fall, Putra. Gonna make me higher. Yeah. You will never see me by the street side begging bread. Just bless me with a roof over my head. Just keep focus. The better is ahead. The power is stronger. They are cousin, like I don't really know me. That no like evil eagle of them would have shown me. Show but as the days go by, many times they try their vision for me to fall. So we're getting stronger and stronger as we go through. And these are the words now to Rastafari. Is it true I and I into self reliance to such a serious extent that we set up our own commune and pinnacle and started our own industry and agriculture? And we know that the foundation to our existence is farming. The Rastafari has set the tone by moving to the land and showing all those Roman soldiers and Roman citizens and those who have been captured that farming is the way forward. The Rastaman also moved into the culture and began to show the importance of music and developed this powerful sound called reggae, rebel music. It's rebel music, you know. 
Rebel and Rebel Music carried a message. It carried a message of hope, a message of liberation, a message of posterity. Now, over the last 20, 30 years, the farming of the Rastaman has come under oppression because what the Rastaman was farming to really make money was ganja. And the Roman society and the Roman emperor and the leaders of the society come down heavy, get overseas support and planes and all sorts of drugs to fight out this economic source. So they mash it up. They mash up the ganja trade, literally. It carried the Jamaican economy strongly through the 70s. Allowed a lot of people to send them kids to the universities. So the system decides to no, these people are getting too uppity. And so they decide to call this thing a drug. And if it's a drug, it's illegal. And the process of to fight started. And it continues. The music has been watered down. And we don't find the influence of Rastafari in the mainstream anymore. So my thing is now, what is it that Rastafari must do in this present dispensation to develop economics? And he says, who will love the farming? I am suggesting now that it's Rastafari must lead the way in farming. The hemp. Yeah, it is a Rasta man. But you see, two get locked into smoking ganja. And we get locked into the all various grades. High grade and low grade and medium grade. That is not helping us generally. It helps the state. Because the state just rush Rasta man and lock you up and carry to jail, take over money, let you back out and lock you up again. So it's a vicious cycle. I and I have to break that cycle. Mentally, we we'll break the mental cycle by beginning to grow something else. Use our same farming skills, farm a plant in the same family. We could leave the weed seed and we could emphasize the industry of the hemp seed. We don't stop saying, you know, the seminar I like. And in another program, I will announce to you an international hemp song competition. A little more right now. The all Portland artists, line up your hemp lyrics. All Portland artists, line up your hemp lyrics. And St. Thomas, I want to go and lead the way, you know. I want to go and lead this revolution the same way Bogle led it. This time it will be conclusive because we shall have economic power. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, Rada, Rada, me appealing to Rada, get conscious, Rada, you are responsible for the agriculture in the region, we want to be able to come to your office and see hemp seeds there, yeah, you know, give the man them carrot seed and all kind of seed and banana seed, banana go buy seed, <laughs> we want hemp seeds, Rada, in St. Thomas, Portland, St. Mary, the item don't want to change the region, this backwash talk and put ourselves at the front of the country. We can do it. We can do it. We can actualize our own power through farming. St. Thomas, Portland, St. Mary. The revolution is on. Hemp is the way forward. Yes, join in, join in, join in, join in. Case. The seminar sounds like a good place to have at Case. Case farmers and youths, link me forward. I am the The master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. His majesty. Big Marcus Gavin. His majesty. Big Marcus. Oh, my people, you couldn't believe said, Can't believe said, Donny. You can't believe it's done. You know, done, you know. As my brother Muta would say, it will continue in your mind, mind, mind. Heal <laughs> up, Brother Muta Baruka. 
Rastakura. Yeah, the Rastakura. And all the people that were responding for the word fest in Portland a couple of weeks ago. Brilliant. That's the far I know. People of the world, be at peace with thyself. Come to know the I. The I is supreme. The I is invincible. The I is immortal. The I will live forever. Peace into your homes and prosperity in thy pockets. I block out. Yo, Kasha Block, Yanji C, and Rastiko. Uh-huh. I remember these. 